summon the Bharati's judgment had lasting implications. Parliament was, though given a long rope, but for the first time put under check that you cannot disturb the basic feature. Although it's a very lengthy judgment, if you have the patience to go through it, you will find that the basic structure, interestingly, was not defined in the case of Anita Bharati's judgment. It was left open. And therefore, the later judgments kept on adding provisions after provisions after provisions within the ambit of basic structure. And now we know that basic structure includes democracy. Basic structure includes judicial review. So on, so forth. It kept on adding. And that was good. For that case one judgment did not define basic structure. Now in the meantime, another story. 24th amendment or case one in the Bharati ke baad, kuch naya ho gaya. Kya ho gaya? Indira Gandhi ka election challenge hota hai. Allahabad High Court ke saam. On the ground that this election was won by Mrs. Indira Gandhi through malpractices, by wrong means. This was challenged by her opponent in that election, one Mr. Raj Narayan, who contested election against Mrs. Gandhi from Allahabad Constituency. Or maybe rivalry. But the Allahabad High Court allowed the petition and held that yes, the election was won through malpractices and thus the election must be set aside. This judgment. invoked a lot of upheaval in the country. Though this judgment was challenged before the Supreme Court, but in the meantime, something unheard of happened in the parliament. Four dates are very important to remember. Seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th of August 1975 because the scheduled hearing of this case before Supreme Court was on 11th August 1975. Four days prior from lightning speed 39th amendment was introduced in the parliament. 7th August 1975 the bill was introduced and passed by the Lok Sabha. 8th August 1975, it was introduced and passed by Rajya Sabha. 9th August 1975, it got assent of the President of India. And 10th August 1975, it was gazetted in the Government of India Gazette notification. Because even after the assent, Notification is an essential. 10th August 1975, 39th Amendment of the Constitution of <coughs> India was gazetted. Thus, more or less rendering the 11th August hearing before the Supreme Court as, as good as infructions. Because by this 39th Amendment, Article 329A was introduced to the Constitution of India putting a bar of the judicial review of on the to, 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 to judicial review of the election of the prime minister that the courts do not have the jurisdiction to look in to the election of the prime minister 
though it's a different story. But finally, the Supreme Court in Rajnara, Indira Gandhi versus Nara, Rajnarayan, 1976 Supreme Court struck down this 39th Amendment. 329A became history. What I want to tell you is the see this tussle between the parliament and tradition. It's an interesting history. As the students of the Constitution of India, you must be aware of these interesting chapters of the history of India in making. And you'd realize that what all went on. So that was the story of 39th Amendment of the Constitution of India and how it became history later on from the landmark judgments of Indira Gandhi versus Raj Narayan, 1976 Supreme Court. But then came emergency. Have you heard of emergency? That was an era probably you must not have been born. But the emergency was proclaimed in the year 1975. Elections were deferred. And during the emergency, Forty second Amendment of the Constitution was brought. And in the constitutional history of India, Forty second Amendment is as good as a drafting of a mini constitution. There were and block amendments in almost every aspect of the Constitution by the Forty second Amendment. 1976, including the amendment in the preamble of the constitution. What you just heard was not the original preamble of the constitution of India. This is the amended preamble of the constitution of India after 42nd century. Because when Sahib, the name Sahib. When Sahib spoke, we the people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India into sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic, the word socialist and secular were missing from the original constitution. They were later on added in the 42nd amendment of the constitution. Besides adding integrity of in, in, unity and integrity of nation in the fraternity clause. So these were and block. There were judicial, there were amendments in judicial aspect also. There were amendments in the judicial review aspect also. There were amendments in fundamental rights also. There were amendments even in this amending clause of Article 368 of the Constitution. Almost every aspect was touched in the second because there was no opposition. This amendment was carried out by the parliament during emergency. <coughs> Though it's a different story that immediately after lifting of the emergency, in the year 1977, all these amendments were challenged and by the landmark judgment of Minerva Mills versus Union of India 1980 Supreme Court most of such 42nd amendments were struck down being ultra-wise. Two important sub-clauses were added, sub-clause 4 and 5. They were added to article 368 by the 42nd amendment by which the entire amending power of the parliament was brought 
beyond the purview of judicial review by Act Sub Clause 4 and 5, which was struck down by Minerva Mills versus Union of India, 1987, restoring it to the original power. There is one or another important judgment called Waman Rao's judgment, residential reference of Waman Rao's judgment, wherein Schedule 9 was challenged because all the statutes which were to be brought beyond the purview of judicial review were to be put under Schedule 9. In Waman Rao's judgment, the Supreme Court held taking clue from the prospective overruling of Golaknath's, the doctrine of prospective overruling was introduced by the Supreme Court in Golaknath's judgment, taking clue from there, prospective overruling in Vaman Rao's judgment, the Supreme Court held that whatever statutes have been put under Schedule 9 till the date of the judgment of Keshavananda Bharti, that is 24th April 1973, shall remain as it is. But henceforth, if any statute is brought in Schedule 9, shall be subjected to judicial review. So another landmark judgments of Common Law immediately after Heather Common's judgment. So an interesting tug of war between Parliament and Supreme Court. And that era was very volatile because we were in the inception of our independence and sovereignty. We were taking steps to strengthen our democracy. And today's strength of democracy, what you enjoy, is the result of those tug of war, those torch bearers of immense knowledge of constitution and belief in its provisions. And if you read these judgments, you'd be amazed with the kind of arguments which were presented. Innovative thoughts brought to the fore. And that will be an eye opener to you at this age and give you an immense insight into the power which lies in the constitution of India and the power it instills into every citizen of India. You will feel that the entire despair which you feel sometimes would be removed from your mind because this despair is due to ignorance. Otherwise it's a beautiful piece of legislation giving you immense power to correct if you find something wrong. Now moving ahead, this volatile history apart, another landmark judgment in the annals of judiciary came by the name of S.P. Gupta versus Union of India 1982 Supreme Court, wherein the appointment of judges in the Supreme Court and High Court was challenged. Because the original constitution said that the appointment will happen by the President of India in consultation with the Chief Justice of India. So the question was whether the opinion of the Chief Justice of India is that of pure consultation or concurrence. Suppose if you disagree with the name, can the President refuse to appoint? S.P. Gupta versus Union of India held that the President of India has the power to appoint and the role of the Chief Justice of India is that of consultation, not conference. 